Hey guys, this is Pastor Scott and Diana, and we're out here at the God's Ten Commandment Park in Columbia Heights, Montana. And I just wanted to do another Bible unboxing or a review. Not so much as a review, as just opening this up and showing you guys what I got. And if I can uh, find the time, I will get around to doing a full formal review later. But let's check this out. I got this from ChristianBooks.com. Let's uh, be careful not to knock the camera again like I just did. So, yeah, uh, I had gotten one of these on accident, accidentally on purpose on eBay, and it was uh, one of the regular print editions. This is the enlarged type companion Bible, and you can see here is the, uh, the bonded leather companion Bible, the regular one. And... Uh, this is considerably bigger, and it is a hardback. This is the bonded leather. I got this initially, but the print is just too small. You can see that this is about a couple of inches, inch and a half to two inches larger, and that's all the way around. And here, let's show you uh, some of the text here. Let's see if we can get this a little more like that. See how you guys, yeah. So this is the regular uh, companion Bible. This thing is... Uh, quickly becoming my go-to Bible. Like, I check this first on just about everything I ever have a question. I go to this one first. It used to be my Dake study Bible by Phineas Dake, um, but this is a little more quick and ready on the references, and it's not as exhaustive. That's one thing I have to say about the Dake study Bible is it is exhaustive. It is my Dake study Bible is humongous. It is massive like with a 20 to 21 inch uh, wingspan when you open it up it's i call it the tank it's so big so this is the regular print uh, let's not talk about the deck but this has taken uh, position number one for me as far as my uh, easy reference bible where i go to and then i always check my date and then other stuff after that so this is the companion enlarged type edition it is a hardback um, this is basically just an unboxing i got it from christianbooks.com and they were so gracious to send me um a replacement copy because this one got damaged by fedex and i'm not gonna uh say too much about that other than the fact that it's not cool and the box looks like it was dropped and uh, it's a little wet or some grease looks like someone was eating a sandwich or i don't know it was in the corner of the van or something so it got a little messed up there looks like it was dropped and um yeah and then there's another page here that they cut in the manufacturing right here that's off and then later on down here you can see this is just damaged. So this thing did not come in uh, that good a condition. I mean, it's new, but it has got some nicks, uh, damage there. Let me get that down. And then this, this is in manufacturing. This is not even cut right. So I contacted christianbooks.com and they were happy to send me a copy. It's on the way. It's on back order till October 15th. And they'll send that to me with a return label. Very easy process. So let me see if I can get this, this back or should we just take it off? I don't even know what to do with that, that piece. It's just jacked up. So this is the Companion Study Bible. And let's just start from the beginning. Got a couple of thin blank pages. pages and the Companion Bible. Authorized. Uh, versions 1611 KJV with structures and critical explanatory and suggestive notes with 198 appendixes. That is so cool. And here's the verse, Proverbs 622. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. The word of God. Let's just see. Maybe we can take this off. I'm just going to brave it and just rip that off because that's just getting annoying right there. All righty. So, yeah, that's it. And the print is huge. Look at that. The contents. This is like a 11 or 12 print. It doesn't say in here what print size is. But I'm telling you, in comparison to this, it is considerably larger. Not sure if you guys can see that. There's that print, and there's that print, and it's just wonderful. And then there's the other, the appendixes at the end, and the general index to the appendixes, or appendices, however you say that. And here's the preface, 
and it talks about the text and how this is not necessarily a commentary, but it is meant to be a companion to your Bible. And you'll see why. There's not much of uh, uh, notes from the, the authors, mostly Bollinger, E.W. Bollinger, yes, a direct descendant of the Swiss re Reformer. And it has more of the preface. You can read about the margins and all that and the different things that it has. Structures, appendixes, explanations, transliteration of the Hebrew words for you Hebrew scholars. I haven't taken Hebrew or Greek class yet, so that's not me. <laughs> and then here's Genesis, structure of the book as a whole. That's what's really cool. And then inside each book, there is also structures inside Genesis itself. So if you're preaching or you're studying, it's really helpful. Let's just see right here. This one, A-C-E, the heavens and the earth, uh, chapter 2, verse 4 through 426. And then it says right here, you got, this is a extended alteration with an introversion. Uh, so E, the heavens and the earth, F, Adam, chapter 5, verse 1 through chapter 6, maybe, and then uh, verse 8, G, Noah, and then the chapter H, the sons of Noah, and then I, Shem, and then D, Terah. And then it goes over here. Like I said, we said it was an alteration and an introversion. Here's another alteration. So then it goes over to C, and then a C, E, which is Ishmael. Then F is Isaac, Esau, the sons of Esau, and then Jacob. So you see how it goes like that, then it introverts over there, and then another alteration. So it has structures of the entire book. Isn't that awesome? And then, like I said, inside the actual Genesis uh, right here, there's also structure. Chapter 1, uh, all the way through chapter 2, verse 31, it refers back to the A over here. And then it's the heavens and the earth, which now are extended alteration. And then it has, again, darkness and light, night and day, first day. And then it goes to B. So that's A, A, and then B, and then the waters, division between them, second day. And then C, a little bit over here, so it keeps alternating. And then the earth and the fruit from it, third day. And then here's your introversion, which goes back over here to the A. And this is day and night, the sun and the moon. Then it goes over again, the waters, light, life from them, and then see the earth, life from there. So that's the fourth, fifth, and sixth day. So that's basically it. This is the actual text up here in the little box, usually in the left-hand corner. And these are all the, all the notes. And uh, yeah, it talks a little bit about the first book. And then uh, chapter uh, 1, or verse 1, chapter 1, the world that then was. And it just goes right into, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God, and there's a little circle right there. You guys probably can't see it. Um, let me see if I can zoom you in there. See that little circle right there? And get that going back here. Hold on, uh, so that doesn't fall over. So that little circle is for God, and there's a note here, G-O-D period, Hebrew, Elohim, plural. First occurrence connects it with creation and denotes by usage of the creator in relation to his creatures. See Appendix 4. In the Hebrew, the accent, and then it's A-T-H-N-A-C-H places the emphasis and gives pause on God as being himself the great worker, separating the worker from his work. And then it has another little circle here for created. And then here's the note for created. Singular occurs six times in this introduction. Other acts 46 times. See Appendix 5. And then perfection implied. And then it gives you some cross-reference and all that. And then here's one more note for verse 1. This is just verse 1. And there are three notes. The heaven and the earth and the heaven and the earth period. With the Hebrew parta, particular or particle, particle <laughs> ETH before, emphasizing the article the, and thus distinguishing both from 
chapter 2, verse 1, heavens in Hebrew, always in plural. See note on Deuteronomy 4.26. So that's just an example of what's in here. And let's go see what it says. Just a, just a split second here as far as the appendixes or appendices. In the beginning, God. And it says here, God, see appendix 4. So let's go all the way to the end and show you guys that. And then we'll wrap this up. This thing is huge. It is huge. This is page 1084. And look at all these. Here's the text, and here's all the notes. And like I had said, there's structures even inside the beginning of the book and then inside the text itself. So for helping with preaching and studying and the subjects and stuff. So we're going to see God back here in Appendix 4 while we got our mind on it. There's 198 appendixes, appendices. And someone correct me if I'm wrong how you say that. You can call me, message me, appendix, appendix, appendices four. Starts over here. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <clears throat> Number four, the divine names and titles. And then if you remember, in the beginning, God created, that was Elohim, God, plural, occurs 2,700 times. Its first occurrence connects it with Creation and gives its essential meaning as the creator. It indicates his relation to mankind as his creatures. See note 2 on Second Chronicles chapter 18, verse 31, where it stands in contrast with Jehovah as indicating covenant relationship. Elohim is God, the Son, and the living word with the creature form to create. And John it gives us references right there, and later with human form to redeem, begotten of his father. Before all worlds, born of his mother, in the world, in this creature form, he appeared to the patriarchs in a form not temporarily assumed. Elohim is indicated as in the authorized version by ordinary small type God. See table on page 7, and then it goes on, Jehovah, and all these other different names of the divine names and titles. Yeah, so this thing is just off the chain. Whoops. Sorry, guys, I knocked that thing. Let's see if we can get it to adjust. My bad. That'll be on the YouTube, I guess. So, sorry about that. This is a like a gimbal thing, and I just knocked it. I just wanted to show you. Okay, so let's go to Revelation, and here's the appendixes. 1,914 pages to Revelation to the end, and then the notes thereof, and then the appendixes start here on uh, page 1. Here's a general numerical index of all 198, covering all sorts of different things. It's the structure of the books of the Old Testament, according to the Hebrew canon, Genesis, the stars also, the laws before Sinai, genitive case, posterity of Cain, Levin, the Decalogue, tabernacle, cherubim, offerings. It's just 198 of these things. Look at all these, 50 to 151 to 119, 120 to 186, the 12 apostles, Zion, trust, psalms. Six martyrs. I mean, it's just crazy. This is the companion uh, Bible, large in large text edition, a large print, bearing the patriarchs, another king, the mystery, the Pauline epistles, all kinds of stuff in there. And then you have the actual uh, appendixes right there, 198 of them. And then at the end of those, and there's even pictures and some. Draw, drawings and graphs, the hours of the Lord's last day laid out. You can study all this stuff. This thing, like I said, the Companion Bible is, I think it's my number one now. The Dake was, but this has a little more uh, stuff in it, even some maps and stuff, which I like to see those. So, yeah, let's get to the end here. I wanted to show you this. I'm trying not to knock this, this again. Pauline epistles, spirits in prison, reconcile, the revelation. It just goes. And then here at the end, the general index to the appendixes or appendices. Can't wait to dive into this. Yes, Joseph Dunn, you, uh, yours is on the way. You can track it. Uh, it'll be there soon enough, God willing. And in one piece, uh, no damage, everything perfect in Jesus' name. Amen.
Alrighty, so here's the general appendix uh, index. So this is uh, alphabetical, Acts, chronologi chronology, Acts 216, age, it just goes on, appear, Abrahamic language, baptism, the formula of Acts, baptize, beatitudes, behold, Christ. I mean, it's just it, all, this is all an alphabetical index to the appendices. So if you're looking for the church, Ecclesia, Ecclesia uh, church, the, the kingdom, church, the epistles, the Pauline, uh, the, the dead and the dead, and decrees, Deuteronomy. I mean, it's just eternal purpose, evil, sin. It just goes on and on all the way through. And this is 227 pages of supplemental uh, studies, 198 of these, and then uh, 227 pages, it looks like. Uh, these are, the, like I said, the alphabetically indexed subjects that you can find thing in the uh, 198 of those. Amen? So this thing is just so cool. This is the hardback, large, enlarged type edition versus the regular bold print, which is going to be listed on Facebook for you guys uh, here in the next couple of days. Alrighty, uh, if you guys like this one, um, I would like to keep it, but honestly, I'm probably not going to use it much, so I'm really feeling led to let it go to one of you guys, even though my flesh wants to keep it. But if it's just going to sit on the shelf, uh, what use is it? So God bless you guys. If you need anything at all, give us a call at one eight five five seventy jesus or log into our website at oneaccordcrusades.com. God bless you guys. Hope you enjoyed this kind of unboxing. <clears throat> Do a witness every day at 316, but since I'm not in public and there's no one here, maybe there's someone watching. If you need to come to the Lord, come to the Lord right now. John 316 says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you need that hope, if you're downtrodden, if you're, you're feeling the, the effects of this, the world the way it is, turn to Christ today. Make the decision. Uh, just come to him. Confess your sins and receive Jesus. And I'm, trust me, your life will get a lot much better and the happiness that you've been looking for, uh, you will find. Set your alarms. I have three alarms every day, 10.02 a.m. in the morning. That's Luke 10.2. Uh, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send workers. John 3.16, for John 3.16, so when we're out in public, you witness, you pray, you give a track, you do something to do the gospel. I mean, we should be doing that all day long, but specifically at John 3.16, and then at 2, uh, what is it, uh, before that was 12, 12 p.m. to pray for our leaders, and that's in accordance with uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, where it says to pray for our leaders. So 10.02 a.m., that's Luke 10.02, Luke chapter 10, verse 2, pray to the Lord of the harvest. At 12.12 12 p.m., set your alarm again and pray for your leaders in accordance with uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, and then John 3.16 p.m. Set your alarm at 3.16 p.m. And, uh, and uh, pray for your lost loved ones, lead someone to Christ, share a witness, or just at least those three times a day. Pray. 10.02, 12.12 p.m. and 3.16. God bless you guys. Jesus loves you, and so do we. Peace.